the Joe Rogan experience. What is the plan in terms of the government? I mean, if they if they can take out a guy like Al Chapo, what is the plans to eradicate all this? And is there really a plan to eradicate it, or is it one of those things where it's sort of a plan on paper, but realistically they sort of accept the fact they're never going to get rid of these people? So uh, I have a like I have a thing like that, like basically uh, Quetzal Quetzalcoatl was a feathered serpent, and I have a image of a feathered serpent biting its tail. Mexico has a problem with amnesia a six-year cycle of amnesia. Every president comes in, has all these plans to eradicate the cartels. President goes out, nobody likes him anymore. New guy comes in and says, well, I have a better plan, you know? And that's the cycle we always go through. You know? So it's a big issue in Mexico. Yeah, and current, currently we have a leftist president that doesn't want to have anything to do with the past uh, administrations that are more on the right of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. His name is Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, AMLO. Uh, vocally supporting Venezuela, oh. the, that that type of guy. Apparently, he has a good relationship with uh, with Trump. Uh, that's that's what people say. Uh, but his whole thing was amnesty for the cartels. That's a campaign promise. Amnesty, yes. And what does that mean? Exactly. Nobody knows what that means. Uh, but that's what he was saying. That was. Did he have a plan for this amnesty, or is it just like a, a statement? Uh, it was a statement, and now if you see uh, counter narcotics operations throughout the country, they uh, the military is not as active as it used to be. Whoa! Uh, some of the cartels are growing in influence um, because of amnesty. Could be, you know. Uh, yeah. it basically, I don't see the efforts that were there uh, when I was active down there. Oh, geez. things change, you know. So I don't know. I I I I. I, I truly think that the upsurge because we're we're on route of be to to having the most violent year in mexico as far as uh, car cartel related deaths right uh, when i got out tijuana had been on the top most dangerous cities on the planet list and i actually worked there when it was on the top and through efforts both for the from the government and and through people like uh, lieutenant colonel Liza Ola, uh tijuana was gone off the list of most dangerous uh, uh, cities in the world. And now it's again at number one, right? Yeah, you sent me that. I was pretty shocked because you don't hear about that here. Yeah, it's uh, six murders a, a night. You know, I was down there uh, two days ago and it was, it's uh, basically cartel on cartel. So they're cleaning each other out and oh, just bodies appear in the morning, you know, on, on bridges, hung from bridges. Um, tortured, shot, you know, that's, you know, but, but again, the, there's nobody's doing anything about it. It should, you know, but they're kind of turning a blind eye in a lot of ways. Oh, man. <coughs> and so with this leftist president, this guy with, who has this idea of amnesty, the, the people that are in charge of handling the cartel, the, the military and the, the police officers, they've got to feel like a little abandoned. Yeah. Or... Maybe some of them will have a business plan and they're working at one side. Oh, know? so that's a problem too. Yeah, so, so so people that aren't aware, you know, we have a separation of powers down there as well. So the army constitutionally shouldn't be engaged in combating the cartels. They shouldn't be engaged in police roles. But there were some amendments done to the com constitution and, you know, laws passed. But you have to realize that some of these people that are fighting the cartels in a policing type role from the military – uh, some of them can't read, right? Or some of them come from rural parts of Mexico that shouldn't they shouldn't be doing that type of activity. So you get a lot of you know a lot of uh, failures on that side of, of mm. the fence. We do have some high level SF uh, com uh, community members in in Mexico that are doing the work, but they're few and far between. And then you have the federal police, uh, which has gone through about four or five name changes in the past, you know, 10 years. Because every time, oh, well, not going to call them that and change the uniform because they're all corrupt. Jesus. But now they're now they're this police, right? So um, so they just change appearances. They change the name, you know, but... Like, Try to refresh the public <coughs> opinion of it. Yeah, there's a famous, uh, uh, you know, mod mod uh, investigation, federal investigation police called the AFI. And... Uh, uh, they were like modern investigative federal police that's going to go after and they were corrupt as hell, you know, <laughs> and they all they did was, you know, get a name change and all these guys got shuffled around and later on I was like, hey, I know you like what? what no, I'm I'm this now, you know, 
but yeah. they're still the same person who compromised. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So those are the federal guys, right? Currently, they, they want to do like a national uh, national police force. And you're like, wow, they're going to get new people that are going to be national police force? No. It's the same guy. Just change your uniform. Change your hat. So that's on the federal side, you know? So we're pretty you know, wanting there. Uh, state side, each state has their own police force, uh, investigation police force, and a preventative type force. And these are politicized because each state government may be opposed to the federal government. So there's a there's some static there now. Whew. And each municipality has its own police force, and they may, might be completely different uh, politically than the state and federal. So. 